hey, it's Stefan, I'm gonna take you through a 26 posture sequence with a couple of flow elements. So, let's go. Start with your backs on the floor. We're gonna begin with a little bit of core workout. So lower back on the ground, shoulders on the ground. Bring the knees on top of your hips. Bring the calves approximately parallel to the floor. Toes can point up a little bit. Interlace your fingers behind your head. And then from there, roll the shoulders down and inhale. And on your exhale, lift up. Shoulders come off the floor. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Elbows stay wide. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Three more here. Inhale, lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale to lift. Stay up here. And we'll do little pulses up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Then from there, keep that left knee where it is. Extend that right leg, 45 degree angle. I'm gonna move the right armpit towards the left knee. And then switch the legs. Right to left, and left to right. Right to left. And left to right. It's not necessarily a very big movement here, but it should engage abdominal muscles quite a bit. Bicycle sit ups, if you will. That for six, five, four, and three, and two. And from there, bring the legs up, toes reach up, and the right hand reaches for your left toes. Left hand reaches for your right toes. Right to left, and left to right. 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 Right to left, for five, for four, for three, for two, and for one. From there. Bring the knees to your collarbones, massage out the lower back just a little bit here. Bring your hands underneath your buttocks, just like this. On your inhale, Lower the legs forward and down, pointing the toes on the egg, lift the legs up again. Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Inhale to lower, and exhale to lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale to lift. Let's do three more here. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Inhale, lower. And exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. On your next inhale, lower the legs down. 
and then a little crisscross movement. Right over left, then left over the right. Right over left, left over right. For 10, for nine, for eight, for seven, for six. Point the toes, four, three, two, one, and then. The legs up, and hug the knees to your rib cage. From here, as we have the knees just like this, eagle wrap that right leg over the left leg, squeezing thighs into each other, keeping the right knee on top of your waist here. Interlace your hands behind your head again, and then little crunches up, just so that the shoulder blades come off the floor. Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Inhale lower, Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. We'll do eight each side. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. One more here. Inhale, lower. And exhale, lift. And then switch the legs so that that left knee now is on top of your right. Might even switch the grip of your hands. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale lower. Exhale lift. Inhale lower. Exhale lift. Four more. Inhale lower. Exhale lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. And let's do one more. Inhale, lower. And exhale to lift. And then from there, bring the knees to your collarbones again. Massaging out the lower back there. Rock and roll across your back. Approximately three times. Cross the feet. And from here, Step back to a plank. First time here. Bring fingertips digging into the floor, into your mat. Knuckles of your hands dig into the floor. Heels of your hands dig into the floor. The heels of your feet move back. Legs are engaged. And so the arches of your hands can slightly lift up. From there, push back down with facing dog. Pedal out your dog a couple of times here. Lengthening the calf muscles. With tailbone up. Rotate the triceps down. And then walk the feet towards your hands. Gently roll up as you just soften the tailbone down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Ground all the way up. Nice. From here. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, find a light little back bend. Inhale. Exhale to a forward fold, long spine on your way down. Maybe a micro bend in your knees to keep the spine elongating. Inhale to a half lift. Long spine again, long muscles of the neck. And exhale, just drop the arms and drop the upper body on your thighs. Grab opposite elbows. And sway, left and right, and right and left. From there, draw the table and soften the table down, roll up your spine. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, back bend. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Again, long spine on your way down. Maybe that micro bend in your knees. Inhale to a half lift. And exhale. This time, crouch and curl. Hands underneath the shoulders. Bend the knees, forehead to your knees. Shoulders stay soft. From here, slowly roll all the way back up as you soften the heels down, soften the tailbone, and roll up your spine. Inhale the arms up. I'm gonna turn over so I'm facing you now. Bring the toes together to touch. Slight little sliver of 
between your heels is optional. If you have the tighter hamstring, you want to soften the lower back a little bit. Inhale the arms up. This time interlace the fingers, release the index fingers. A minute long hold here. Ardha Chandrasana, eventually to Padha Hastasana. Go up and over to the right, up and over to the left. Tick tock the body side to side, left to right, right to left. Sway the body. Each time, fingertips reaching up and to the side. Come back to center. Heels go down, index fingers lift up. Take a big inhale and go up and over to the right. Hips bump to the left, you pull yourself over to the right. Maybe that left hip can come slightly forward, maybe that right armpit can come slightly forward. Keep the shoulders on top of your waist, waist on top of your ankles, so your body is stacked, nothing protruding. As you step the left foot down into the floor, lift that left shoulder up against that and bump the hips more over to the left, pull yourself more over to the right. Right side of your body, you keep the length, so step the right foot down into the ground, lift that right inner armpit up with the help of that right arm. As you straighten that out completely, pull the entire left side of your body a little bit more over to the right. Your chin stays up off your chest, entire throat visible for the camera right now. And then that center line of your body elongates all the way into the fingertips. It's not a straight line as you can see, but it's one line of energy. Fingertips reaching over to the right. Elongate inhales, exhales, and then bring it back up to center from here. Heels root down, index fingers lift up, take another big inhale, and go up and over to the left. Hips bump to the right, you pull yourself over to the left. Maybe right hip comes slightly forward, maybe left arm hip comes slightly forward. Shoulders stay stacked, top of your waist, waist on top of your ankles. Legs are active, pull kneecaps up into the quads, strong foundation here. Draw the abdominals in. And then find that space, right side of your body, that stretch. Set that right foot down, lift right shoulder up. Direct your breath to that right side of your body, to that stretch. At the same time, keep the length, left side of your body. Left foot anchors down, left armpit lifts up. Help of that left hand, pull that entire right side of your body over to the left. Face stays forward, muscles of the neck stay long. Elongate your breath. Soft inhales and exhales. And then slowly bring it all the way back up to center. I'm gonna turn here just for the back bend see that from the side. As the heels root down into the floor, look up to what the index fingers are pointing at. And then from there, as you keep the waist tucked forward, find that lift in your sternum. It's as if you imagine a thread that's hanging down, drawing you actually up by your sternum. That's where the lift is coming from. And then you take your gaze behind you just lightly. As long as you can keep that lift, Be able to breathe, still be able to swallow. Palms group together. And then slowly bring it back. From here, the reaching up, hinge forward at your waist, fold forward. Long spine on your way down, and you can again use that little micro bend in your knees to keep the spine elongated. And then from here, I have a couple of options. First, bring the hands towards the floor, maybe touch the floor, and walk out your feet. The soles of the feet on the ground if possible. And then bend your knees approximately halfway so that your upper body can draw to your thighs and you find a little bit of compression there. Not so much that it interrupts your breathing, you still be able to breathe as fully as you can. But find that light little compression here. Then, you might bring your hands underneath the heels, maybe the outside edges of your feet, maybe for your ankles. It depends a little bit on where you are with your flexibility and your body makeup, actually. Me, I like to, if I can, bring the pinky fingers right next to each other, then the elbows behind my calves, and then I start to pull. 
You lift the tailbone up. Feel that stretch in the hamstrings. Forehead comes closer to your shin bones as the elbows come closer together behind your calves. And that will depend a little bit on where you are. Keep the muscles of the neck long as you keep the action of pulling consistent. So for some of us it will might look a little bit more like this. And that is totally fine too. The objective here is to lengthen the spine. As you direct the breath between your, each of your vertebrae, see them drifting apart a little bit more. And slowly release that, interlace the fingers in front of you, and slowly bring it all the way back up to standing. And then arm by your side. Utkatasana, chair pose, three levels of uncomfortability as we sometimes call it, also from the side actually. So bring your feet approximately hip width distance apart, outside edges of your feet line up with the outside edges of your hips here, two second toes point straight forward, heels root back. Lift the arms forward and up, palms face down, fingers scoop shut, and then from there slowly sit yourself down into an invisible little child's chair. Try to keep the knees behind your toes. So if you were to look down, you would want to see your toes a little bit. In other words, bring the weight into the heels, keep the toes lightly on the ground. Hip points lift up off your thighs right here. And then the chest draws slightly forward as you keep the collarbones open but the arms reaching and active. You might find yourself shaking a little bit in the legs. Building new muscle memory, if you can, bring the weight even more back into the heels and slowly draw it back up. Come up high onto your toes, tall spine, long spine, as if you have a very solid block of something in your back that supports you. Keep the spine upright and just start to bend the knees as you keep the heels. Push the tops of the feet forward. The knees stay in line with your hips, that hip width distance. Lift the heels up, lift the heels up, lift the heels up. Find that shaking and slowly draw yourself all the way back up to standing. From here, as the heels draw down, bring the knees together and the thighs together. You'll come slightly forward as you can see. And from there, Again, with the idea of that very solid block of something in your back that supports you, keep the arms reaching and active and slowly descend. Shoulders stay vertical above your waist. Keep the arms reaching and active. Squeeze knees together and the thighs together. Let that give you stability so that the waist stays higher than your knees here. If you are really comfortable, you can Go for a couple bounces here, stop on an up bounce, and then slowly draw yourself yeah, all the way back up. And the feet step in, and arms down by your side. From here, Garudasana, eagle pose, part of our flow here. Yep, also, actually, we'll do this front one from the front and then move to a version from the side. So with the toes together to touch, and have the arms up. Uh, swing that right arm underneath the left, curl it around, wrap it around, palms together to touch, draw the elbows down, sit down halfway, and then from here, lift that right leg up high over the left, curl it around, wrap it around, watch what that left hip is doing. For many of us, it will draw back, as we lift that right leg up and over. So once you have your wrap, single wrap, double wrap, doesn't matter that much, just keep squeezing the upper thigh bone down onto lower thigh bone. Once you have your wrap, bring the left hip back to alignment so that both of your hips stay even. Got the grip in your hand. Alternatively, you can find a bear hug variation if the shoulders aren't that open, totally fine. Bring knees and elbows closer to the center line of the body. I'll have it here. And then we'll flow as we lift that right leg up. And then this turn 
just to show that here. That depends just on your space at home. So I'll just go back a second here, lift that right leg up and over, and then draw that right leg back. Upper body draws forward, arms stay interlaced at first, right foot is flexed, and just draw the elbows forward, giving the shoulders a little stretch there, and then unwind the arms, interlace fingers, release the index fingers, point the toes back, and we're at Tula Dandasana, balancing stick. So rotate your right hip down. What helps there might be the rotation of the inner thigh muscles rotating up. Point the toes back, fingertips forward, left leg is solid, unwavering, and then slowly you bring that all the way back up. So now, just, yeah, I'm gonna just turn around. Again, that will depend on your space and how you structure your practice. Other side, left arm swings underneath the right, curls around, wraps around, palms together to touch, draw the elbows down, then from there, sit down halfway. Left leg up high over the right. Watch what that right hip is doing. Single wrap, double wrap. Well, that double wrap, press the top of your left foot into the back of your right calf, into your right calf. Bring knees and elbows closer to the center line of the body. Reallocate that right hip in alignment with the left. Draw knees and elbows closer to the center line of your body. And then from there, Unwind that left leg. So we'll turn here. This will depend on how that looks for you. I'm gonna just pick that up from that lifting the left leg back and up, and then draw that left leg back. The heel tries to point all the way back. Arms still interlaced. Just move the elbows forward. Unwind the arms, interlace fingers, release the index fingers, point the toes. Ah, yep, yeah. point the toes back. Right leg stays solid. Left hip rotates down. Inner thigh muscles of the left thigh can rotate up. Tula Nandasana, balancing stick. And then slowly release that. Let the arms go. You might straighten out your mat again. Maybe grab a sip of water here. I'll find a child's pose. Let's go through a child's pose here. Bring the knees wide. The toes touch together. And then for your child's pose, just bring the palms of your hands forward, forehead to the floor, and let the elbows rest. This is more so a restorative pose. Just allow the upper body to soften. And we'll move forward. Just a couple of cows and cats, hands underneath your shoulders, hips directly on top of your knees. Inhale, find cow. As you lift the upper body forward, back and exhale to cat, dome your spine, inhale cow, exhale to cat, and one more, inhale cow, and exhale to cat. From here, push yourselves up plank and downward facing dog and from there walk your feet towards your hands anchor that left foot down into the floor really really stable and right knee lifts forward up right foot flexes underneath and that left leg is what we're working so try to keep that left leg as stable as possible Solid, unwavering. Knee cap up into the quad. This will look like this pretty much. And then you have the option to stay here. Grab the right knee. Pull a little bit towards you. Just keep that tension on that 
left standing leg, how solid that is. And if you want still more, you can round yourself forward and down, clear some space on your way down and grab that right foot with the webbing to webbing grip from underneath. That little kick into your hands, draw the abdominals in. And then if that left leg is really, really solid, you can extend that right heel forward. Two straight legs, 90 degree angle in between them is the goal here. And this might take a while to even get close to that. Just bring your attention back to that standing leg and then slowly reverse your way out of there. That right foot draws to the floor. Feel the big toe, outside edge of your right foot, feel the heel and lift that left knee forward and up. Left foot flexes underneath. Right leg is where the attention is. Right leg really, really solid, unwavering. This could be it. Or you can grab that knee, slightly pull it in. Right leg stays solid. And if you still want more, round yourself down. Give some space on your way down. Grab that foot with the webbing to webbing grip and all 10 fingers included into that underneath the ball of your foot. Abdominals in. And then if that right leg is solid, maybe you'll kick, extend that left heel forward. Two straight legs, 90 degree angle is the goal. Once you kick forward, your balance is likely to shift, so try to bring the weight forward in towards your toes a little bit more. As you again pull kneecap up into the quad, keep that right leg really, really solid. And then slowly reverse yourself out of there. A little assisted back bend might feel good here. And to your lower back, lift the sternum up. And then from there, moving forward. Bandiyamana Dhanurasana, standing bow, right elbow to the right hip. Open the palm, bend the right knee behind you, and then collect the foot from the inside of your ankle. If your flexibility allows for that, if not, you can grab it from the outside. So you have two options here. This one is the slightly preferred option because the right shoulder already rotates open and back. From there, keep both of your knees relatively close together at the start. Both of your hips want to stay even here. Left arm reaches forward and up, palm faces. Uh, yeah, palm faces forward. And then start to kick the foot into your hand. Swipe that right knee straight back in space. Watch that that right hip stays as much in line with your left hip as it can. So. Try to make that right knee disappear behind your right hip as that right hip stays forward. Foot eventually comes up behind you more and more as you still reach with the entire left side of your body up, up, up. Find that stretch that comes from kicking the right shin up and behind you and at the same time still reaching left side of your body upward. Your breath there. As strong as the wind. And then kick to come out. You want to turn for the other side, just so that you have the visual of both of your hips aligning. Left elbow to the left hip, open up the palm. Bend the left knee behind you. Collect the foot from the inside of the ankle. Right arm reaches up, palm faces forward. Once you have that grip here, left side, start to kick your foot into your hand. For the first couple moments, just focus on that contact, foot to your hand. How high can you kick the foot up behind you while you still reach with the entire right side of your body up, 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 elongate. Left knee stays in one line with your left hip. Kick that foot up more behind you and still keep that reach at the right side of your body. The shoulder rotates open and back. Eventually, that right shoulder will come more forward. You might experience two shoulders in one line. 
Kick a little bit more. Reach a little bit more. Foot comes up behind you in the mirror. Uh, foot comes up behind you. Kick, kick, kick. And kick to come out. From here. Pull that on the other side. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, find that back bend. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, find a forward fold. Long spine on your way down. Inhale, to a half lift. Exhale, crouch and curl. Forehead to the knee. And then, right hand to the floor, left hand to the floor. Right foot steps back, left foot steps back. Front plank. Fingertips into the floor, knuckles of your hands into the floor. Heels of your hands, root back, heels of your feet, roll back. Whole body engaged. Muscles of the neck long. Push it back downward facing God. Pedal out your dog. Tailbone lifts up. Triceps rotate down. From here, we'll go through a little bit of a flow. Inhale that right leg up. Exhale, rotate that right hip open. That right heel draws little circles here. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, knee to your nose. Find some space here, draw the abdominals in. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, knee to right shoulder. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, knee to left elbow. Try to keep your hips even. Level. the bend. You can grab a block here and bring that to the inside of your right foot. Find that 90 degree angle here in your knee, ideally. And warrior two. Crown of your head just on top of your tailbone. Lift the palms, lift the left, tilt your body to the right. Hand lands on the block. You look up to what that left hand is pointing at. One line of energy from the left heel, side of your leg, side of your body, now into the fingertips as that arm reaches forward. And maybe bring that right arm also to reach forward. And reverse your warrior. Keep that right knee bent. Find that stretch right side of your body. And then this time without the block, Find warrior two, flip the palms, look left, tilt your body to the right. Elbow to the inside of your right knee here. Look up to what the left hand is pointing at. Left hip draws forward, left side of your ribcage rotates up. And then with the help of your left hand reaching behind you, maybe you can hug that right hip in. If you have that openness, maybe you'll go for a bind here, reach that right arm underneath you, underneath your right thigh. And then again, look up. And slowly reverse your warrior. Find that stretch, right side of your body. From here, inhale, start. All five extremities away from you. Maybe there's a light little back bend. Exhale to horse, knees towards your toes, hands, palms of your hands together, and then you can sway your horse right and left and right and left, maybe all the way to Skandasana. Back to horse, hands on your thighs, 
Tuck that right shoulder in as you straighten that right leg. Tuck that left shoulder in as you straighten that left leg. Right and left. Back to horse. This time, or from here, step that right heel up and pulse your horse five and four and three and two and one. Right heel down, left heel lifts up, five and four and three and two and one. Both heels down, both heels up, five, a little bit slower than you would like, four and three and two and one. Heels draw down, hands to your waist. The toes come in, outside edges of your feet approximately uh, parallel to the floor, uh, parallel to uh, your hips here. Bring the arms to the sides and hinge forward at your waist. Pull forward, long spine on your way down. Try to keep the waist directly above your heels here. And the spine long as you reach forward and down. The hands can come to the floor just underneath your shoulders. And use a block again for that. It's an option. The objective here is to keep the spine long, elongating. The other option here is to bring hands underneath your heels, maybe around your ankles, outside edges of your feet. You have a couple options there. And then find a pulling action and draw the spine forward. Collarbones open up to the front edge of your mat. Want to take out the rounding in your spine? Pop the chest forward. Now hands to your waist. Slowly roll all the way back up. From here, step that right foot in, about a foot or so. Inhale the arms up, palms together to touch, thumbs cross. Pivot on both of your heels. And watch that that left hip draws forward a couple of times so that both of your hips again align. Inhale, lengthen to your fingertips, then chin to your chest. Round on and curl and curl in, get real small, real compact. Forehead to your right knee connection. With that connection, try to bring that right hip back and up from there. So that again, both of your hips want to align. You can hear how my voice sounds a little bit constricted right now, given the parathyroid and the thyroid glands a good workout. So that actually should be that way forehead to your knee, maybe that right leg eventually comes to straighten, a little balance challenge, palms of your hands come together and slowly round all the way back up. From here, interlace the fingers behind you, arms press, and you push yourself up lightly off that left foot. And the upper body draws forward. The left leg comes up behind you, toppling tree. Then a little bend in your knee. Maybe you support yourself with your hands here. Left knee towards the right calf, Shiva squat. And then standing splits at right. The left leg lifts all the way up. If you want more, both hands can come around your right ankle and eventually forehead towards your shin. Left leg lifts up. Step that left foot back, step that right foot back to find a plank. And then exhale, push yourself back, downward facing dog. From there, inhale that left leg up, exhale, Opening up that left hip, circulate that right heel around, inhale left leg up, exhale knee to your nose. 
Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, knee to left shoulder. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, knee to right elbow. Hover there. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, knee to right to the nose. And step it through. Right heel to the floor. Windmill, the arms open. Warrior two. And then from here, bring that block to the inside of your left foot. Flip the palms, look to the right, tilt your body over to the left hand, lands on that block, you look up to what that right hand is pointing at. Now one line of energy from your right heel, that right leg really, really active, right side of your body into that arm, reaching 45 degrees forward, and that left arm can join. Reverse your warrior, that left knee stays bent, find that stretch. And then, this time without the block, here again notice, head right on top of your tailbone in warrior two, lift the palms, look to the right, and tilt your body to the left. And then again here, you can use the back of your right hand to draw that left hip underneath you, so that that left knee draws straight forward and that left thigh is a continuation of that. And then maybe you reach that left arm underneath your left thigh and find that bind. Reverse your warrior, find that stretch, and then here, inhale to star. We'll turn around, so you'll see that from the front, to star, and then towards, and then here, this time, second time around, we'll do something different. Inhale, star, exhale, all everything out. Inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale, inhale, start, hands to your waist, toes draw in, outside edges of your feet parallel to each other, until these fingers behind you, open up collarbones, shoulders draw back, hinge forward at your waist, fold forward, long spine on your way down. front edge of your mat, maybe touch the head down to the floor, find that stretch in your hamstring muscles here, legs really really active, and then slowly round all the way back up, hands to your waist, this time we'll show the other side. Inhale the arms up, and then bump that right hip forward again. So careful not to cross your heels behind you. This would be crossed heels. Basically wanna have a line drawn through the middle of your mat. And you can put that left foot directly on to the left of that, and then the right heel also touches it. And then with that, you have a little bit more room to bring that right hip actually forward so that both of your hips align again. Inhale, both of your arms up. Thumbs cross, chin to your chest, and round down and curl and curl and get real small, real compact, forehead to your left knee connection. With that connection, see if you can bring that left hip back and up as that right hip basically pulls forward. Palms of your hands together, little balance challenge, and you slowly round all the way back up. Interlace the fingers behind you and we'll go for a toppling tree. As you push yourself up off that right foot, draw yourself forward. And we'll 
your Shiva squat, right knee to your left calf, support yourself on your hands and then lift that right leg up. Standing splits, upper body to your thigh, forehead towards your knee and maybe you bring hands around your ankle here for a little bit of extension. From here, we'll go for a forearm plank. Elbows underneath your shoulders. Legs active. And then start to walk your feet in to dolphin. back down and facing dog. Walk the feet towards your hands. And we'll go through tree. Couple versions with that. Last thing we're doing, standing. Anchor that left foot down into the floor. Lift that right heel up high into your left hip crease. Hold it there with your left hand. That right knee draws down, opening up that right hip here in that 26 version of it. Your hands can come to Namaskar. Keep both of your shoulders soft and level. And you have another option here. If you want to go more for the vinyasa version of tree. Bring that right foot to the inside. Yep. Bring that right foot to the inside of your left thigh. Or to the inside of your right calf. From there, step that right foot down, lift that left heel up high into your right hip crease, hold it there with your right hand, the left knee draws open, left hip opens up, both hands, namaskar, both shoulders level, and then you have the option to bring that sole of your left foot towards your right thigh or towards the calf. From there, inhale, the arms up, exhale, back bend. Inhale, the arms up, exhale, forward fold, long spine on your way down. Inhale to a half lift, exhale to crouch and curl. Find plank again. And then lowering down. Sternum, knees. And then untuck the feet. Tops of your feet press into the floor so much so that the knees lift up off the floor. Elbows lift up and in. Inhale. Cobra. Elbows stay up and in. Get one more rib up off the floor and use maybe the fingertips to draw yourself a little bit more forward or play more with the weight in your hands. From there, Shavasana. Lay down, left cheek to the floor, look to the right, toes touch, heels fall open. Training the body to see how much you can relax here. After working it very, very hard, just resting now, letting everything go. From there, chin to the floor, left right side of your body up, wiggle that right arm underneath you, left arm, left side of your body up, left arm underneath you, pinky fingers right next to each other. Inhale to lengthen the right leg. Exhale, lift the right leg up off the floor. We're looking for length more than for height here. Sole of your foot draws towards the sky, the ceiling. 
right hip stays down. Slowly let that go. Inhale, so lengthen left leg. Exhale, lift left leg up off the floor. Left hip stays down. Sole of your foot reaches for, yeah, the sky, the ceiling. And slowly let that go from there. Mouth to the floor, chin to the floor. Spread your fingers a little bit. Inhale to lengthen both of your legs. Exhale, lift both of your legs up off the floor. Use the fingertips to draw the weight more forward into the shoulders and lift the legs up even more. And very, very slowly, draw them down again. This time look to the other side. Right cheek on the floor, toes touch, hands full open. Belly Shavasana. From here. A couple options here. If your space is limited, you can cactus your arms. Or if your space isn't limited, you can reach out your arms. Inhale, peel yourself completely up off the floor. Both of your toes reach back, your legs stay long, both of your arms to either side, or you cactus the arms and reach your elbows to either side. Keep the shoulders soft, one more rib up off the floor. And slowly let that go. Look to the right, left you on the ground, soft gaze, arms down by your side. Belly Shavasana. Bring the chin to the floor, bend both of your knees behind you. Collect the feet from the outside like two steel hooks. And then start to kick your feet into your hands. Let that lift your upper body up off the floor. Shoulders roll open and back as you intensify the kick. Soft part of the belly. Kick up, lift up, reach up. And slowly let that go. Look to the left. Right you on the ground, soft gaze, arms down by your side. It is a windy day, so we're grabbing our block. Supta Vidrasana, fixed firm pose. Bring both of your knees together, top of your mat, and then Opening up your feet, toes splay back. You can use the block to sit down on it if the sit bones don't quite reach the floor here. That is a good version to keep the knees safe. If your knees feel good and your sit bones come to the floor, there's the option to bring the upper body down onto the floor. your elbows with each hand and then bring both of your knees a little bit closer together and from there slowly all the way back up pedal up your feet a couple of times on a downward facing dog I will go for Camel, peak posture of this entire sequence. So stand on your knees, knees approximately six inches apart, just hip width distance apart, hands to your lower back. Lift the sternum up, keep the waist directly above your knees as if you're leaning on a, on a block of something here. Uh, you can judge that by the stripe. Hands to your lower back, lift the sternum up. across the sky in this case. As you find your back bend, if your hands come to your heels, keep the waist tucked forward. Big frontal body opener. So be able to breathe, be able to swallow. And then bring your hands to your lower back. Sit on your heels, link up the ankles, lift the arms up, palms press. With all of 
solid length in your spine. Hinge forward at your waist. Fold forward. Long spine on your way down. Forehead to the floor. Pinky fingers to the floor. Elbows stay lifted up off the floor. This is a little bit more active than a child's pose. So bring the nose onto the floor if possible. Muscles of the neck stay long. Upper body stays reaching forward. Lower body starts to compress sit bones to your heels. On your inhale, reach more forward. On the exhale, bring sit bones to your heels. Press your palms together, bring your thighs together, draw the abdominals in, let all of that bring you up off the floor. From there, grab your heels. You can use a towel to support that. Start from a position of length, tailbone to the crown of your head, and then draw the chin towards your sternum and round in vertebrae by vertebrae. Forehead to your knees connection. Little bit of weight possible, top of your head, not much. Stability is coming from forehead to knee connection. As you hold on to your heels, pull, lift the hips up from there. And then slowly come back. From here. Not much to do. Cooling down phase of this. Bring yourself to see it. Variation here. Put the arms up. And then draw your peace fingers around your toes, big toes. Put the thumbs on top and draw yourself forward through the gates of the arms sternum forward. This is more a spine lengthener than a spine rounding. So keep the muscles of the neck long. You can tuck your chin in slightly. And then maybe draw the heels forward a little bit more. But you can also keep the knees just bent if that helps you keep the spine longer. From there, go for a twist. Offer your ear the seated twist. And left knee to the floor, right foot crosses over. Plant both of your sit bones down to the floor. If that right sit bone right now doesn't really touch the floor, you have the option to bring that left leg forward. And then the left arm lifts up. You find that turn. Elbow to the outside of your right knee here. Hold on to the left knee or whatever you can grab there. Maybe part of your clothing, part of your mat. Collarbones open up, inhale, go tall. Exhale, twist over to the right. The middle and the upper back are the parts of your spine that are actually twisting. Maybe you find two shoulders in one line. Into that twist, inhale for length again. And exhale, lean into your twist behind you and then softly let that go maybe a little counter twist here and then switch the legs that right knee now to the floor left foot crosses over left sit bone to the floor if not extend that right leg forward I'll show you the other version though now left arm behind you right arm up find your turn elbow to the outside of that left knee you hold on to the right Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist. Middle and upper back over to the left. Inhale into that twist, grow tall. Exhale, lean into your twist. And slowly come back. A little counter twist. And we're almost at the end here. If the seated, if that seated twist variation is not good for you, you can also do a supine twist on your back. Keep the, keep the soles of the feet to the ground. And then from there, just let the legs fall to the right. Just make sure the left hip is right on top, right stacked right on top of that right hip here. And use 
use that right hand to draw knees, to accentuate the stretch, and then you look to the left, find that twist there. Same thing as we come back, other side, legs, knees will fall to the left, and you look to the right. Maybe that left hand on your thighs, on that right thigh, on that left, right knee, to accentuate that twist. And then from there, slowly let that go. Options, couple options. If you would like more, a happy baby definitely. Grab soles of your feet from the outside, draw the knees to the floor, lower back on the floor. Softly, you can sway that baby left and right. Also, another option, just lifting your, your legs. You could do that against this wall, for example. Like this. Which is just a little bit more supported. And then also the option for a shoulder stand. Hands to your lower back. And the toes reach all the way up. We'll let that go and find Shavasana here. heavy, draws into the floor, head heavy, you allow yourself to sink, to float, and bring the attention to your breath, and elongate, inhale, exhale, eventually bring the breath to an audible, and stay in the Shavasana, two minutes, five minutes, Seven, ten, whatever calls you to get. We'll close off the practice. Find a fetal position. Support yourself on one side. Push yourselves up. Find a comfortable seat. Palms together to touch. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through this sequence. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I must end.